The 1980s are pretty well known for that decade's wide assortment of awesome practical effects. From Stan Winston's work in The Queen Alien, all the way up to the Rancor in Return of the Jedi, that time period had a really cool way with making monsters. Unfortunately, there are a lot of movie creatures and special effects for stuff that has fallen by the wayside against more popular films gaining massive followings. Everyone knows about the scene where the heart gets ripped out of the guy's chest in Temple of Doom, but not everyone remembers every little thing from every single movie, especially movies that aren't really held in high regard. Well, Conan the Barbarian is one of my personal favorite films of all time. Like a lot of people, it was my introduction to the Robert E. Howard character and what made me pick up the paperback collections of his stories that really do a good job at building out an awesome world. The movie has some practical effects for monsters and other animal-esque stuff, but it's actually Conan the Destroyer that I think had the better beast. Now, while I'm not a really big fan of this movie, I think more people should know about the monster Dagoth, which starts out as just an ordinary statue that the characters call a dream god. Now, over the course of the movie, something happens that makes the Dagoth statue turn into a gigantic purple-horned monster portrayed by a man in a suit by none other than Andre the Giant himself. There's a lot of fun behind the scenes material of both Andre and Wilt Chamberlain standing alongside Arnold so that you can get a good sense of how much taller they were in comparison to the bodybuilder, but when Andre is in the suit on the screen, you get a whole other world of cool. Now what I think makes this monster so underrated and interesting in comparison to other creature effects that people talk endlessly about from the 80s is the fact that this thing is designed and presented to the audience in some really eerie ways when you put it up against literally everything else in the film. In fact, I'd go as far to say that this is actually the best special effect creature in the Conan movies by far, both of them, and a lot of that has to do with this monstrous design. It's got a very otherworldly looking mouth filled with little teeth that open up on the side and that giant horn is actually used as a weapon to impale someone with during the final fight. The beast uses its massive webbed hands and clawed feet to stomp and crush its enemies, all the while its Godzilla-like tail whips about the set. The way the filmmaker shot this thing was also really smart by having flashing lights and darkly lit environments within the palace conceal any sort of flaws or problems with the suit, which just adds to the believability of something that, come on guys, came out in 1984. Of course, I'd never claim that this thing is the greatest special effect of the decade, but when it comes to being one of the most memorable that nobody talks about, I definitely think it deserves some credit. And by the way, speaking of the monster, look at Arnold here at the end of this movie. Conan the Destroyer is famously known as a very disappointing sequel to the R-rated original film due to the violence being cut way down and the rating falling to a weak PG, but towards the end of the movie, Arnold is out here looking proper barbarian style Conan with the axe and the sword and the amount of blood and violence that they let the characters dish out to the monster is just insanely awesome in comparison to like literally everything else in that entire movie. In fact, in order to kill Dagoth, you have to rip his horn from his head, which is done in a really brutal fashion that I just don't see anyone talking about that's a fan of this sort of filmmaking. I know everyone talks about the Rancor, the stuff from Gremlins, Critters, everything else like that, but come on, Dagoth, this thing looks awesome. Now, my best guess is that it's because it's in a really mediocre movie, but nevertheless, I still think this entire battle at the end of the film is extremely cool. I think if Conan the Destroyer had this stuff throughout the entire movie instead of just the finale, people would have liked it more and Dagoth probably would have gone down as a much more memorable appearance within the 80s, but yeah, it's unfortunately just not what happened. As for the film itself, like I said, it's nothing to really write home about. I've heard it compared to the other Conan books that aren't written by Robert E. Howard or Else Sprague de Camp, and I can see that, but when it comes down to the finale, I can't deny that I really do like the creature design and everything that's going on with the way they kill the monster, which is one of the reasons why I think it's the most underrated of monsters from the Conan films as well as 1980s creature effects in general. Again, not exactly groundbreaking here, but definitely a highlight. For comparison's sake, here's a quick clip of me having a discussion with the snake in the far superior film Conan the Barbarian with Tony from Hack the Movies over on his channel. <laughs> My biggest issue with this entire film is, yeah. is a, a special effect, yeah. and it is the snake. You don't like the snake? I don't like the shot of the snake when it opens its mouth and you see the fangs come out. To me, it's... Uh, no, I like the 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 killing of the snake yeah. is incredible. The snake is cool. When I first saw it, I'm like, is the snake real? No, I always... Because it's just sleeping. It but. was... Oh, no, when it's sleeping and shit, it's cool. Yeah. And when it's like wiggling around after... It Conan is... Yeah, it... it when it pulls its head up, you That's can tell the that, one thing. You can tell they had a problem with it, getting the head up. It's like that scene in Jaws where it jumps on the boat. Yeah, on the it's like a little it, You know, there's like one scene in these movies. Yeah. Like, 
I can even pick something in Jurassic Park. Like I mean, now it would look great. Yeah, well, they wouldn't have to deal with it. Yeah. Anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on Daggett, the monster from a far less interesting sequel portrayed by Andre the Giant that actually looks really, really cool. But hey, what are some of the most underrated movie monsters from that time period that you can think of? I'm sure there's a lot out there that doesn't really get talked about. Personally, Invaders from Mars is one that scared me a lot as a kid that I still think is pretty cool. But whatever your own thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.